Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. I'm Katie Bertrand. Today we're going to be working on a fun little project. Um, I thought it was a cute idea, just a fun way to dress up a dish drying mat. I got this mat at the Dollar Tree and I've got a bunch of scraps. Now my scraps are actually from all the masks that I have made um, this year for 2020. So I have this large bag. Um, this is just what I've cut. I've got like another bag, probably a garbage bag full of scraps. But I've been taking my scraps and making some quilt squares. And so now I'm just trying to find some other uses um, for my scraps. And if you sew, I know you have a bunch of uh, scraps from your projects because all of us seem just as we're not going to throw them away those scraps we're going to put them to good use so this is what you would call a scrap buster project so i'm going to go ahead and clip this and open our map this is also kind of a technique we're going to use called um, quilt as you go so just a little different so what i've done is i've already cut my strips and I was already using two inch strips for the quilt that quilt squares I was working on. You can cut the strips any width you want. Like if you want two inches and then four inches, one inch, and just make them random, that's totally fine. You just wanna make sure that they are long enough. And then mine's already getting threads off the table. Uh, you just wanna make sure that it's long enough to go across your mat. Um, the, the skinny side because we're just going to sew the strips this way. Um, so however wide you want, if you want it to be different width, that's perfectly fine. That is just um, a design element that you can decide on. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to be sewing. What I want to do, because how I'm going to finish this, I'm actually going to serge around my edges, I think. So the first thing I wanted to do, is I'm going to lay a strip out. I'm just gonna make sure that the length, okay, it does hang off the edges. I'm not gonna worry about the edges, lining them up. Um, if they hang off a little bit, that's fine um, because we're gonna just kind of sew across as we go. Um, so I'm gonna take this over to the machine and I'm just gonna use the edge of my presser foot as um, a seam guide. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start sewing. I'm gonna make sure I do a little back stitch here. And I'm gonna just sew all the way across. And I'm sewing down my first strip here. Now, you can map it out. Uh, or you can just grab your strips as you go. I'm going to take this one. So how I'm going to do this one is I'm going to put right sides together. That's the pretty side of the fabric. And I'm going to line these up. I mean, I'm going to stitch right here because then when I fold it over, I've got a finished seam inside. And we're going to continue to do that all the way down. So I'm going to take this over to the machine. Again, I'll do a little quick back stitch and I'm using the edge of my presser foot as my guide for my seam allowance and I'm not doing any pinning you can just hold it if you feel like you need to put some pins in it uh, by all means go ahead and do that I don't particularly like to pin if I don't have to because I feel like it slows me down so now we're going to fold this out and so that's sewn right in there. And then we're gonna grab our next strip. Again, I just pulled out some pieces I liked and I'm lining up this raw edge right sides together and we'll sew down our next strips. at the end, beginning and end of each row. Clip these threads. I'm 
going to trim all this excess off at once, so don't worry about that at the moment. And then I'm just going to kind of press it with my hands and just smooth it out. If you feel like you want to iron it, go ahead, but you don't necessarily need to. Okay, so I'm going to grab my next piece, right sides together. Smooth that out. Just a little tag. I need to let it cut that. Pull that out. That little. Just pull that out. Okay. So I'm just going to smooth this out, but as you can see, I'm just going to grab. This is just going to be a really cute, scrappy, you know, project. But for me, this is all different material that I've used to make masks. Because this is my um, way to remember all the fabrics that I used in 2020. And just a fun way to use, use up fabrics. And I'm just going to keep grabbing more fun fabrics. The hardest part of this project is going to be choosing your fabric. That will be the hardest part. Just trying to decide which ones you want to use. So it might be better just to put a bunch of them that you like in a pile and just randomly grab them. Make it a little more sporadic. But if you like the plan and want them all laid out in a certain color order, that's fun too. material <laughs> again just lay those strip the raw edges together right sides together and as I'm moving down and I've got less over here than I do here I'm gonna turn this around we'll start sewing from this direction it'll be a little easier so you don't have so much bulk um, in between the throat plate as you can see here you know you don't have so much uh oh, thread came undone. I don't have my reader, so threading this is gonna is a challenge. I'm using one of my older machines that just needed to get some use and it doesn't have this um, threader on it like the other newer machines, but this machine sews really well. <laughs>
have another pink. Oh, this one is a hair too short, so I'm not gonna use that one. It's just ever so slightly too short. So we'll go ahead and use the strips plenty long. And if I didn't pull that thread out again, I guess I'm pulling it out when I put the mat in. It's, I'm grabbing it accidentally. <laughs> We just want to see how many times I can thread this machine. <laughs> and I'm just grabbing my th fabric, making sure they're smooth and that they're lined up. enough pieces let's see that one will work I think I need two more so we'll do this one and one more after that One more. Let's see. Which we get in my bag here. Well, this one might get cut off a little bit. Is this long enough? That is not long enough. That work. All right. Our last strip. machine out of the way real quick. So we have all of these sewed together and all of our seams are hidden in there. So I'm going to just turn this over as you can see on my threads. <laughs> but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim all of this edges and I'm using my super sharp Kai scissors. If you haven't tried these, these are really great. And I'm at my store and we're not open, so I'm not gonna answer that phone. <laughs> okay. It's around. I have to get the lint roller and get all these threads off the black, off the back of the black. <laughs> this little drying mat is kind of like um, polar fleece, everything clings to it for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the iron real quick. I'm just gonna give it a quick press. And then how I'm going to finish our edges is I am going to just serge around it. So if you have a serger, it's a great way to finish it. Now, if you do not have a serger and you have no idea what I'm talking about, a serger is an overlock machine um, and actually this mat, all of your clothing, if you look on the inside of your clothing, all the, um, let me see, I can show you right here, like on my jacket or my sweater here, um, our serge, it just finishes the edges. So other options for finishing this is, you can get bias tape and sew it around the edges. You could do a decorative stitch on your sewing machine um, and just sew around the edges because it is a drying mat it's not a garment we're gonna be wearing it's just something cute and fun so when you have it out 
The other thing I would suggest is to make a holiday match. Um, that's the next one I'm gonna do um, because a lot of times when we are having guests over for the holidays, Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, we get out our good china and crystal and some of those things cannot go into the dishwasher. So it's great. Uh, or you use a lot of your big pots and pans. Um, so it's an, an opportunity that you probably will be using your drying mat more often. So a cute holiday prints would be really fun that you have out on your count on your counter. So I just thought this was, you know, fun print. So let me press this really quick. Take it over here. Okay, so I just gave it a quick press. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go take it over to the serger, and I'm just going to serge around the edges. Um, I was trying to decide what color I wanted to do, if I wanted to do a dark or a light, but the back of it is a dark, so I might just do a black, because I'm thinking of the drying mat, you know, if I serge it in a white, it might look dirty, so I think I'm just going to use a darker color, so let me get the serger set up here, we'll switch out machines. Okay, perfect. So this is a serger, as you can see. I have, a lot of them use four threads. I tend to just use three threads um, and just uh, one needle. So I'm going to serge this edge and see if this machine, I just had to change the needle, so I'm gonna make sure this one works okay. Actually, let me do a scrap. We may have to switch machines. I just broke a needle on this the other day and I haven't even tested it to make sure it's set, still sewing okay. And plus then I can show you. Okay, perfect. So I just wanted to run this real quick. So this is what the serge stitch does. It does that little overlocking so that your fabrics don't fray. So I'm gonna go ahead and we will serge around our mat. It's also going to cut off the excess as you go. I really don't want to cut off the mat, so I'm just gonna do it right on the, along the edge so it's cutting the fabric only. And again, you can make this serging, the thread color can be part of your uh, design element. If you want it to be a brighter color or, you know, big contrasting color, you know, make it fun. I mean, if, like the next one I'm doing, I think I'm gonna, you know, like I said, I'm gonna use my Christmas prints. And then maybe uh, you can try even some variegated thread if you have like Christmas colors or something in your serger. Move this machine out of my way. That's not laying flat. So again, I'm really just kind of trying to just barely grab the mat and not really cut the mat. Because it is a little bit thicker, but I want to make sure that we get all the excess, the fabrics and things. edge here. And I am cutting a little bit more on the mat here because I've got that beginning stitch so I want to make sure it gets covered. And because this is a thicker material on my serger I am going just a little bit slower. I want to make sure that because sometimes when you go fast on your serger and you've got some thicker material it can uh, break a thread or um, break a needle. And it can be a little time consuming, take you a little bit to get it set up.
Okay, so here is our drying mat. Push this back so you can see it. But isn't that adorable? Now, you can do this same thing and make a placemat. Even if you wanted to use the drying mat as, um, you know, this could be a placemat. It doesn't even have to be a drying mat. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, but this would be super cute to make holiday placemats the same way and use this drying mat because it's already thick enough. So it's kind of, you know, gives you that quilted look. And then if you even wanted to try some quilting techniques, you know, you could, you know, do a little free motion quilting on this. You could stitch in the ditch if you wanted to. So you could turn this into an actual quilt project as well. But I just think it's a fun little beginner project. Great way to use up those scraps. And it's super cute and colorful and fun. And you can make all kinds of different holiday themes and do um, all kinds of fun stuff. So the other thing I think would be really cute is to give this as a gift because you can fold it up or roll it up you know, tie it with some ribbon and even pair it with, um, you know, oven mitt and a little mixing spoon and um, maybe some type of brownie mix or muffin mix or something like that and create a cute little kitchen set. But this just adds a cute little uh, design element. So it's not just your plain old uh, drying mat. Um, or you could create a set of four of these and give them as a gift as placemats. So again, don't throw those scraps away. Turn them into fun little projects like this. And even if your scraps are not long enough, you know, to cover this, you can piece them together. So you could um, have different um, fabrics in each row. So really use your imagination and have some fun with it. And I would love to see your projects. You know, be sure to send me a picture, um, you know, post a picture. would love to see what you all make. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, or if you want to get notified for our YouTube videos, hit the little bell icon and you'll be notified when we have our next video come out. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.